Delectable Mountains is a traditional quilt block that's made with these jaggedy pieces. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this block with different variations. Welcome to Eva's Studio. My name is Elizabeth, and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pujagi, and embroidery. Delectable Mountains is a traditional quilt pattern and it's made with these strips with these little jagged pieces. Now there are a lot of different ways to make this piece, but I'm gonna show you one that is quick and easy and also versatile. So the first thing you probably noticed is that this piece is not square and it's certainly not a 12 inch block. This piece finishes at six inches by seven and a half inches. But if you hang on to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how you can make this into a 12 inch block and how you can make variations of this in other sizes that will help you get a 12 inch block. So to make this block, you're gonna need two eight and a half inch squares of fabric. And then on the back of one of them, you're gonna draw a diagonal line from corner to corner with a pencil, water soluble marker, something like that. And we're gonna put them right sides together and we're gonna be doing what I call the most popular method for half square triangles. So if you wanna see the whole tutorial, you can check that out. But we're gonna put them right sides together and then we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch or slightly less than a quarter of an inch away from that diagonal line on both sides. So now that the stitching's been done, we're gonna cut apart right on the line that we drew between the two lines of stitching. And then we're going to open those and press them and you can see we'll have half square triangles. So the half square triangles are done. Now we're gonna trim these so that they are exactly eight inches square. It's gonna be kind of close to eight inches, but we're gonna trim them so that we're exactly eight inches. Now we have our eight inch squares and we're going to cut these into strips, but there are two different ways to do this. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So the first way, we're gonna lay them on top of each other and we're going to uh, line up the pink color, but we're gonna lay them up so that the diagonal line is in opposite directions. So both of these are face up. They're not right sides together. It's right side to wrong side. And we will lay them exactly on top of each other with the diagonal lines going in opposite directions. Then the other variation is we can take our two squares and lay them up so that they are going in, they're exactly the same. And we're gonna cut them the same way. So I'm gonna show you what the difference is between these two methods. But when you pick one, then we're gonna take the eight inch square and we're gonna cut it into two inch strips. So you will get four two inch strips. So now that we have our pieces, we're going to lay them out, but we're gonna switch the direction. So we're... That one's that way. And this one goes this way. So you can see we've taken these strips and just moved the one from this side over to the other side. And we can see it looks kind of like saw blades with these little peaks. So now we're just gonna stitch these four strips together with a quarter inch seam. Now the other piece that we cut with a diagonal going the other way, it is gonna be just a mirror image of the first piece. So by switching the diagonal, we get two pieces that are mirror images instead of two pieces that are identical. And I'm gonna show you how we can use that when we put it together into a block. Once our strips are joined together, this is what the piece is gonna look like. And so this is where you'll have some fun if you wanna join your two pieces together. So the traditional way is to join them so that the mirror images make a little mountain that goes up and down. Um, and that is one way to do that. Uh, another fun way is you can have the negative versions of each other. So this is another really fun design. And so these are the two that are mirror images that were cut 
with the diagonals going opposite directions. But you can also get some fun effects with the two pieces that are identical. So we can see these two pieces are identical. So we could join them like this. This is gonna look like different kind of mounts, up, down, up, down. And that actually echoes the shape of the piece. So that is a fun variation. Or we could join it like this and we get like a jagged zigzag. So you could do a whole quilt like this and just have diagonal lines going down the quilt with your pieces. So there are some fun variations with this as well. So you can play with this block and figure out what you like to do. Now you'll notice that this piece is six and a half inches by eight inches. So that means the finished size is gonna be six by seven and a half. And so we, if we join these two together, then we're gonna have 12, finished 12 inches across, but it's not gonna be a 12 inch block up and down. So if you're doing a quilt just with this piece, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be 12 inches square. Your blocks don't even have to be square. You can make a whole quilt just with this. However, if you're mixing it with other 12 inch blocks, then you would want this to be 12 inches, for example, if you're doing a sampler quilt. So there are a couple of options you could do with this. You could either just put a strip of pink fabric on the bottom and a strip of yellow fabric on the top, and that would get it to the 12 inches square, or you can do a different size piece. So I have this little piece. This piece was made with a five inch square and I made half square triangles and I trimmed them down to four and a half inches. And then I cut the four and a half inch square into three strips of one and a half inches. Now, this one only has three strips compared to this four, but it's the same, it's, it's the same idea, but this piece finishes at three inches by four inches. And so if you can do the math, you'll know three inches by four inches means that if I do four across and three down, it's going to end up as a 12 inch square. Now these mountains are quite a bit smaller, but if you are just making a delectable mountains block for a sampler quilt, this is another good option. So you can see there are a lot of variations with this block. So have fun playing with this block and playing with different color layouts. For more inspiration and ideas, you can check the link below to go to the tutorial. And I have some diagrams to show how these blocks would look made up into a quilt. And for other quilting tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out ebitastudio.com.